Reproduction in plants and animals Reproduction Reproduction is the essential function of living organisms that is plants, animals and unicellular organisms for the continuity of their species. It is as important as eating is important for the survival of an individual. Every organism produces young ones of its own kind. Humans produce child, cow produces calf, mango produces mango plant, etc. Besides this, reproduction is also responsible for the transfer of hereditary characters from one generation to the next generation. Thus, reproduction is the mechanism through which the continuity of a species is maintained from generation to generation. Types of Reproduction The two types of reproduction are Asexual Reproduction It is a type of reproduction that does not involve the fusion of male and female sex cells. In plants and animals, it is almost similar. In general, asexual reproduction takes place through these methods. Fission It is a very common method of reproduction in unicellular organisms. Here, an organism divides almost equally into two parts. Nucleus and cytoplasm both divide equally through a septum. It is also called binary fission. For example, paramecium, bacteria and yeast. Budding Budding is another method of asexual reproduction in which an outgrowth from the parent is produced which is called a bud. The nucleus of the parent cell divides into two and one passes into the bud. After several cell divisions, the outgrowth is detached from the parent and behaves like an individual organism. For example, yeast, hydra, etc. Fragmentation Sometimes the body of an organism is broken accidentally. Each segment or fragment germinates and produces a new individual. For example, Hydra, Spirogyra, Eulothrix, etc. Spores formation Sporulation Some seedless plants produce rounded structures called spores. Spores are small rounded bodies surrounded by a thick wall. Spores may be motile or non-motile. During favorable conditions, spores germinate into new organism. For example, mucor, rhizopus, etc. Regeneration The ability of a living organism to regrow or repair a portion of its body that has been injured or lost is called regeneration. The term regeneration normally means the regrowth or missing or damaged body parts in higher organisms, but whole body regeneration also occurs in hydra, starfish and many plants. Healing in cut parts of our body is an example of regeneration. Vegetative Propagation It is the growing of new plants from the vegetative parts of the plant like leaf, stem or root of a single parent. In vegetative reproduction, Sex organs do not take part, hence seeds are not produced. Vegetative Propagation in Plants In general, plants can be produced by vegetative propagation through these methods. Natural Vegetative Propagation Certain plants grow from its vegetative part. Some of them are described as below. By roots, in general, Roots do not have capacity of regeneration, but dahlia, sweet potato, blackberry, etc. reproduce by roots. When the roots of such plant are buried into soil, a new plant arises. By stem, there are certain plants which reproduce through their stem like potato, ginger, sugarcane, etc. Mostly, it is due to the underground modifications of stems. Let us study about some of the modified underground stems. Rhizome Rhizome is the underground modified stem 
which grows horizontally below the surface of the soil. They have buds which develop into branches. It is fleshy due to accumulation of food material. For example, ginger, turmeric, etc. Tuber Potatoes have eyes or depressions where buds are present. Each bud gives rise to a new plant. Young plants developing from the tuber buds are nourished from starch stored in the tubers until mature enough to develop root systems. Corm Corm is a modified underground stem which is short and grows vertically in the soil. It has condensed food material and has a large apical bud which gives rise to a new plant. For example, Colocasia. Bulb Bulb is also a modified underground stem which contains sufficient food materials. It consists of many fleshy leaves. New shoots rises from the bud. For example, onion and garlic. By leaves. Few plants can be propagated through leaves. Buds develop on the margins of the leaves which develop to form new plants. For example, begonia, bryophyllum, etc. Artificial Vegetative Propagation Humans have used this method of production of new plants from the leaves, stems or roots of a single parent. This has been adopted for commercial use of rapid propagation and to obtain plants that are hard to grow from seeds. Let us study about some common methods. Cutting Cutting is the most frequently used and easiest methods to propagate plants. In this method, parts of the plant are cut and planted into the soil. Cutting may be selected from the root, stem or leaf. For examples, sugarcane, rose, coleus, etc. Layering In layering, an intact branch is bent into the soil and is covered with moist soil. This is done in such a manner that growing tip remains above the soil. After few days, roots arise where the branch is in contact with soil that it is separated from the plant. In this way, a new plant is produced. For example, jasmine, black raspberries, etc. Grafting Here a freshly cut section of stem with buds called a seon is joined to another plant called the stalk. The seon is securely attached to the stalk and the tissues of the two plants grow into each other forming a single plant. The seon produces the stems, leaves and flowers on the new plant and the stalk provides the root system. This method combines the qualities of one plant to another. For example, mango, rose, etc. Budding it is similar to grafting. In budding, a single bud instead of a branch is grafted on the stalk. For example, rose, mango, etc. Tissue culture A tiny piece of leaf or stem from a plant is removed and placed in a sterile test tube on a gel-like medium enriched with hormones and nutrients. A yellow-brown unorganized mass of cells called Callus develops from the piece of plant. Small chunks of the callus are separated and each piece is placed in a petri dish containing nutrients. This develops into new plants. The young plants are removed from the petri dish and placed in pots with soil. Advantages of Vegetative Propagation 1. Plants which do not produce viable seeds this is the only method of reproduction like sugar cane. 2. It is the only method to get pure plants because there is no cross-pollination and sexual fusion. 3. It is easier, fast and less expensive. 4. Plants raised through vegetative propagation are pure and having uniform characters of parents.